Hello, and thanks again for joining us. Reproductive rights and women's health-related issues continue to generate headlines nationwide following the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade in June. Most of the news is troubling, including a court decision in Texas that will allow trigger laws to go into effect that could hold medical professionals criminally liable for performing abortions. Additionally, an appellate court in Kentucky upheld trigger laws in that state, which ban abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. Ten states so far have permission to ban the kind of abortions that have been performed for decades now. The recent referendum in Kansas protecting a woman's right to abortion was a great victory, and hopefully there will be other successes around the country. It is reassuring to live in a state and county that believes in women's health and reproductive rights. Our leadership in the Maryland General Assembly, representatives like Delegate Ariana Kelly and Eric Ludke, and our entire county state delegation saw the writing on the wall earlier this year and worked to help protect rights months before the Supreme Court decision. We're also doing our part in the county government. In May, after the leak of this decision, I worked with the county council to allocate a million dollars from the county budget to help abortion providers with added costs that they'll incur because of the ruling. We're finalizing how the money can be used in the form of grants. Our nonprofit providers of women's health and abortion services can expect that application process to open soon. After the decision was formally announced, I also put in place new rules for county employees that effectively ends official county travel to states with abortion restrictions. And I've begun an effort for our county to proactively reach out to businesses in those states to ask them to consider relocating to Montgomery County, where women's rights and all people's rights are respected in our community. After businesses in those states acted to restrict abortions. To that effect, my office, along with delegates Eric Lutke and Ariana Kelly, sent letters to key companies such as Tesla, Humana, AT&T, and others headquartered in cities like Austin, Dallas, Louisville, and Kansas City to consider moving to Montgomery County. Whether it's technology, healthcare, life science companies, or just small socially conscious businesses, there are going to be many owners, members of boards, and employees who are going to demand to work in states that respect their rights. And if there's a chance that company leaders are exploring a move out of state that doesn't value a woman's right to choose, then we want to help them find their way to Montgomery County. Montgomery County has been paying close attention to MPX, also known as monkeypox, since the outbreak began in May of this year. MPX is a rare infection that is showing up more and more across the United States. According to the CDC, there are currently 149 cases spread across Maryland and the District of Columbia has reported 248 cases. At this point, the State Health Department is not telling us how many cases originate or are being treated in Montgomery County. This is a virus that spreads after close contact with somebody. Sometimes it's through sex, other times it's through shared items like towels and clothes. Symptoms are similar to the flu with common complaints like fever, headaches, muscle aches. A skin rash can accompany the virus. It can appear all over the body and look similar to pimples or blisters, but they can also be painful and itchy. Touching those scabs or sores is the most common way of spreading MPX. Respiratory droplets created when someone coughs or sneezes can also pass the virus if you're in close contact with someone who tests positive for MPX. Doctors don't believe the virus stays in the air long and has not been shown to linger on surfaces like doorknobs. If you feel sick, don't go out or have sex. It can be several weeks before someone with MPX is not contagious anymore. If you do get sick, there are treatments available, but the most important thing for you is to distance yourself from others. The current supply of MPX vaccines is very limited. Currently, our vaccines are by appointment only and limited right now to known contacts who are identified by public health via case investigation, contact tracing, and risk exposure assessments. We probably won't get any more doses until September, and that's why the health department has established a pre-registration program for an MPX vaccine when it's more widely available. Not every resident in the county should pre-register. This pre-registration is intended for individuals who are identified high-risk category. When vaccines are available, those who are pre-registered and qualified will be contacted and offered a vaccination appointment. 
For more information, please visit montgomerycountymd.gov backslash MPX for more information. In COVID-19 news, this week's case counts and hospitalizations remain a concern just compared to where we were last year to today. We were at close to 50 cases per 100,000 people back then. Today, we remain above 200 cases per 100,000 people, and we've been at that level for nearly a month. That's why we're asking everyone to be ready to wear a face mask voluntarily if you're in a high-risk setting, like an indoor crowded place. The elevated community level status is also a warning for congregate settings like nursing homes to be more vigilant, test more, monitor conditions, and take COVID concerns seriously. We've seen more fatal cases of COVID in June and July than we saw throughout the spring. Another trend we're seeing is reinfection. Hospital records show us that even if you got COVID before, you can get it again. Natural immunity is not as strong as what people are getting from the vaccines and boosters. It continues to be true that more serious cases and more fatalities are more likely to be occurring in the unvaccinated population. One of the key reasons why Montgomery County has been so successful in preventing and mitigating COVID has been the diverse and equitable outreach efforts that are helping our county be a healthier and safer community. Our efforts are reflected in our outcomes, and I'm proud of these efforts and results. We'll be utilizing the same outreach and engagement efforts for MPX as well. This weekend and next week, Montgomery County will have two health fairs aimed at helping specific communities. On Saturday, you can join us for the Ama Tu Vida event at Montgomery College in Rockville, starting at 11 a.m. It's the first time we've had this health fair for the Latino community in person since 2019, when around 7,000 people actually showed up. It's also coinciding with Salvadoran American Day, which also helps bring out a good crowd and will keep the campus busy until 7 p.m. Then the following Saturday on August 13th, Montgomery County's African American Health Program and other DHHS maternal and early childhood care health programs will host their inaugural Right From The Start event. It focuses on several family health issues from preconception through early childhood. One particular concern, Black women account for almost half of all the infant deaths and fetal losses in Montgomery County last year. Right from the start will be held from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the White Oak Community Rec Center in Silver Spring. I hope you'll consider joining us at these upcoming events. This week, I visited five communities who gathered for our 38th annual National Night Out activities. It was wonderful to see the public safety officers gather with communities they serve to renew friendships they've made over the years and to speak with people about community safety issues. Thanks to Chief Jones and the Montgomery County Police Department, the Fire Department, the Sheriff's Office, our municipal police departments, as well as other county staff and community partners for organizing these events. This week I attended the brand new Tacoma East Silver Spring Community Action Center, also known as TESS. TESS helps bring needed services into the community and has been doing so for more than 50 years. This new center is part of the Department of Health and Human Services Community Action Agency, one of several dozen federally mandated groups working to end poverty. The center will now continue its mission of helping the Long Branch community and others with food, housing, early education, and tax preparation. Thousands of residents receive assistance each year for this effort. I've worked with TESS for decades. It's in my neighborhood and I understand firsthand how valuable they are to Montgomery County. I congratulate them on this new building and location, and I'm proud of their outreach and thank them for the crucial role they play in improving the county's health and equity outcomes while enriching the lives of those they serve. You can add another 60,000 square feet of lab space development to what has already been an extraordinary year for the development of life sciences businesses in Montgomery County. This one comes with an added success story. Our Celix has just signed a deal to expand operations in Rockville. Comes after successful stints for the business at the Germantown Incubator and then another stint in a building in Gaithersburg. The Cell Therapies Company started in 2014. The first big expansion came in 2016 and 17, along with the first prototypes for the company. In 2020, patients first started using treatments developed through work 
in the Gaithersburg Arcelix headquarters. The company is now traded on the NASDAQ and just last year announced that it raised $115 million to fund its next expansion in the advancement of adaptive and controllable cell therapies for cancer and autoimmune disease patients. Congratulations to everyone at Arcelix for your success. Did you know that commuters working in Montgomery County can get reimbursed for up to $280 a month for using public transit or van pooling by asking their employers to set up a transportation benefits program? Our fair share program offers reimbursements to local businesses for their employees' cost for commuting to work by public transit, and the money is tax-free. We're hoping more businesses take the same route as Elumin Incorporated in Healthcare IT, a company based in downtown Silver Spring, which has reduced employee vehicle miles traveled by more than half a million miles already and saved an estimated 23,000 gallons of gas yearly by encouraging employees to adopt these policies. We have more information about Fair Share on our Montgomery County Department of Transportation website at montgomerycountymd.gov backslash D-O-T. For us, the summer wouldn't have been complete without our Summer Rise students. The program allows hundreds of Montgomery County public school students to see what the working world is like. Throughout July, we've had students as our shadows learning the ins and outs of our offices, the functions of each department, and how they interact. Two RISE participants who spent the past month in my office, Sophia Stern from Blair High School and Tamaya Pulliam from Sherwood High School, interviewed me at the end of their experience. I really enjoyed their questions and our conversation, and please check out their interviews on the county's YouTube page. Thanks for listening, and have another great week.